Ravings and Cravings here with you on WILI Live today to dish about my upcoming show airing every Monday at 5.05 p.m. on WILI 1400 a.m. and 98.5 FM. Shows will be on Charter at a time to be announced and I'll be talking about food, food, and food. A very tasty topic indeed. Today is a little introduction about what I hope to do with this show and also for you to get a chance to get to know me. You know, I, I really wish that we could do this in person with a good strong cup of coffee and a yummy pastry, but for today, this will have to do. You know, if Matt wasn't in the studio doing the recording, I would be all alone. So thank you for being here, Matt. So on we go here. I came to Connecticut in 1984 with no intention to stay here. No intention at all. I'm originally from Wisconsin and a student at the University of Kansas at the time. So I chose Fairfield Hills as my place to do my music therapy internship. This was a state psychiatric hospital. So near the end of the training, I learned of a job opening at Connecticut Valley Hospital in Middletown. So I figured, you know, why not apply? No time like the present. So uh, I was very surprised when that interview landed me a job much to the chagrin of my parents in Wisconsin. So I have been living in Connecticut here ever since, since 1984. I loved my job and the purpose that I found in it. When I married my husband, who was a Master Guild Mercedes-Benz mechanic, and yes, I'm sure you're asking, do I own one? The question is no, I do not own one. When I married him and began having children, I quit my day job to stay at home with them. So... Jonathan and Rosie, or Rosemary, grew up here in Willimantic. In fact, they were privileged to watch the first frogs arrive at the bridge during one of our school days. I think they were like five and two years old, respectively. We came to watch the monumental event of the first one landing on that spool. We also enjoyed Cupid crownings and many other events in our town, as well as statewide. As you can imagine, having kids at home 24-7 and then poof, they're gone, is a shock and a loss. At least it was to me. I found myself walking past their bedrooms crying way too much. So I finally told myself that I needed to get a life and I needed to get a grip. During that season, I read the Chronicle that stated a new person was owning the newspaper. His name was Michael, and if anyone had suggestions for what to print in the paper, to contact him. So I did. So I was very excited to do this. I pitched the idea of stories about local food, their owners, restaurants, and unique things on the menus, family stories, and the like. So he gave me my chance to write for the local paper. My column, thanks to Carlton Newell for the name that was chosen, Ravings and Cravings, ran for about four and a half years every week. I took my leave of writing for the paper last October because I felt it was time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had other ideas. So, you know, I thought, well, should I do a cooking show on Charter? Should I do a podcast? I thought, you know, who needs another podcast? There are already way too many voices for people to listen to. So I totally nixed that idea. Uh, so I started pitching the radio idea actually over two years ago. You know, coming on the radio and talking about local food, local restaurants, and even maybe getting a little global. So when I would get to the studio on occasions where I would have a chance to talk about something like the chocolate festival or an upcoming piano recital, or I, I did a, a presentation about the Armenian genocide. You know, I've sat behind this microphone. I remember Wayne was very anxious to get me in here after I went to Armenia because he wanted to hear all about the country because he's just a travel geek. So I, I was very excited always to come behind the microphone. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'm going to pursue the radio trail. So I went to business people that I had interviewed over the years, and I did get some support for the idea. So I was like raising my own funds to get on the radio. But the timing, I felt, was poor. So I walked away, and I decided I would apply for funding and support through a couple of other organizations that are here in town. One of them is Pajot, the Pajot Trust, and the other is the Austin Foundation. So 
I applied to both of those places, but neither would open the door or fund the idea that I had about having Ravings and Cravings Radio. And that's not to say that um, that they're bad or anything like that. I received funding from Pajot, and they were always supportive of a lot of things I've done in the past. And Austin had other interests, so that was okay. After all that, you know, and collaborating with Click in order to make the the grant application for Austin because I had to be a 501c3. Thank you to Lee Duffy for for offering me that status and helping me be under that umbrella. You know, uh, it, it was a wash. So I thought, okay, this is never going to happen, ever, never. Then the Wyndham Economic and Community Development people approached me. So Jim Bellano approached me about doing radio ravings and cravings and Colin Rice here at WLI. I think he waited for me well over a year to make things happen in this space. So thank you to both you guys. And I fast forward today as I sit behind the microphone. Drawing on over four years of those weekly food stories, both local and global, and relationship connections with people I've interviewed, I have I find myself here behind the mic. So if you're anything like me, I have questions. I am going to flesh out today's introduction for you so you can get a taste, which, you know, it is a pun intended, so it's okay to laugh, so you can get a taste of who I am. Career-wise, I am a music therapist. So since 1984, I have had my credentials as a music therapist. I've been an educator in all things music since 1979. So I have played music in churches. Weddings, funerals, gatherings, I've played in barns, I've played in lots of places. And thanks to the Pajot Trust, I have a portable piano to take with me to those places. I also love cooking and baking. So for any of you out there in Radio Land who have magazine subscriptions, I am a field editor for Taste of Home. Basically what that means is I am one of a thousand people who test recipes, who submit recipes for publication, and sometimes see them get published. I've also chaired the Romantic Willamantic Cake Baking Contest as well as the festivals. I've invested in my community working alongside clubs like the Garden Club, the Victorian Home Tours, doing a concert series at the Garden on the Bridge, an outdoor concert at Memorial Park, Things at the Textile Museum, Donut Making with the Lions Club at the Hebron Fair, visiting rehab facilities, providing music at the even at the new Wyndham Senior Center, doing sing-alongs, story times, when accompanying people at the Wyndham Regional Arts Collaborative. I, I've done a lot of things in the community, and I am I feel very lucky because I've gotten to do things that I really enjoy. And actually, for some of you, you will be surprised to know that I actually ran for a town council office. So I really did want to get my hands in politics, but that never happened. But my take on that was I can probably do more good not sitting in an office than I would be if I were elected. So I was okay with all that. So I am invested in my community and I have had many opportunities to provide and participate in things that I've believed were and are blessings. If you haven't figured it out by now, I really enjoy food. I do enjoy food also from other cultures. So I've had a 35-year involvement with a ministry called International Students at the University of Connecticut. I've also traveled around the world a bit, and I've eaten some interesting things. I would consider myself a curious diner. I like to try to guess what's in something. I will eat just about anything, but I found that ants with wings, roasted and sitting on top of a pile of corn, and pine nuts is not my go-to. And neither is that licorice that you find at Ikea, which tastes like, okay, I'm. it's just getting a little gross, I realize it, but it really does taste like salty snot to me. I just cannot eat those two things. Otherwise, you know, I am good to go. Give me sushi, I'll take anchovies, dark chocolate, gourmet foods, bologna sandwiches. That's like one of my favorite things. Fancy desserts and raw cookie dough, I will eat it all. A couple of Christmases ago, Country Woman magazine ran a story about having invited international visiting scholars from the University of Connecticut to my home, along with many other students. 
the three women scholars came with all the ingredients needed to make traditional jousa or dumplings from scratch. So along with all the other guests and food on every flat surface, they cooked and made this incredible meal for us. It was fun to see my story in print and it was fun to remember that day. I've also published stories about food in an online magazine called Connecticut Food and Farm, which is the brainchild of Winter Kaplinson, along with photographer extraordinary, extraordinary Lisa Nichols, a full multi-page color story of my family and Armenian food recipes, grace the pages. So I'll allude to all things Armenian in a few minutes, uh, but I'll go on to say that I also wrote a story for the same magazine about Maria Garcia and her catering business. I've had the opportunity to write about my traveling experiences to Armenia in an online Armenian magazine called Armenian Weekly. My uh, five-part story with photos ran shortly after I returned from being in that country for a whole month participating in the musical Armenia Project. What a spectacular experience. And another online Armenian magazine was published, has published my mom's Armenian cookie recipe with a brief story to boot. I have enjoyed teaching cooking classes at Click. I've done a fundraiser there uh, called, I think it was called One Pot Wonders. And then I also did a traditional Armenian cooking class. And I also did a cooking interactive type of thing at the University of Connecticut. I did a series couple of summers ago called Hungry Huskies Cook with Ruth. So I wrote the curriculum and I did a teaching piece for 30 minutes at the front end and then a hands-on demo for the other 30 minutes on the back end. It was interactive and it was well received. You know, I really didn't want to do this and have it be like everybody looking at the screen and looking at a big black hole because, you know, we were all staring at screens at this time and we really were craving human contact. And so the International Student and Scholar Services people made it happen by having a staff at my house and also a staff manning the cooking class so that when there were questions or things that, comments that came from the people who came to the class, I could hear what they were and I could answer the questions in real time. It was really wonderful. I know I already alluded to the fact that I homeschooled my kids through high school, but, you know, uh, with all of the kind of bragging I've already done about myself, I have to throw in something to let you know that I am still human. So uh, case in point, when my son-in-law was going to be deployed while he was serving in the Army, and yes, thank you for your service, Wade, I decided to send him a care package, and in it I included a sheet of wax paper. So you are probably asking, why wax paper? I'm glad you asked. Because when he was dating my stepdaughter, I decided to make a knock your socks off dessert to share with them when they visited. I followed all the directions to make a triple layer pavlova, which is a delicate dessert made with baked meringue layers slathered with creamy Nutella in between each layer and then enrobed with all of that on top. It looked great and we were all ready to dive into the dessert as I cut with my serrated knife, I noticed there was a resistance that seemed very odd. The knife should have gone right through that dessert. I figured out what it was. I had forgotten to remove the wax paper that each meringue layer had been baked on when I assembled the creation. Yep, you can go ahead and laugh now. We did laugh at that. We ate it anyway. We took bites, chewed, and spit out the wax paper as we went. So the wax paper was supposed to remind us of our times together because, you know, food has a way of bringing memories that we have to, uh, to the forefront of our minds. It was, a, it was a fun memory. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, which who is, right? I've enjoyed sharing a program I designed. I designed a few years ago before it was really vogue to not waste your food. Now it's a big thing. I called my presentation, Don't Throw It Away, What to Do With Your Cooking and Baking Boo-Boos. So I would bring in my boo-boos fix and I would share them with, along with the recipes with the session attendees. It was a lot of fun to hear the comments of people like, really? You really did that with that? Wow, it tastes so good. You know, growing up in an Armenian family, we, we didn't throw anything away. 
So I did say I was going to allude to that, and I'm going to allude to the Armenian family thing. So if we go back a little further in my history, you'll learn that my dad is from Beirut, Lebanon. My grandfather survived the Armenian genocide of 1915. He and my grandmother met in an orphanage run by missionaries from Germany. His trade was a baker, my dad a watchmaker and a jeweler. My dad came to the United States first with his two trunks and a dream floating into New York City in hopes of finding a wife, which he did, and eventually better medical treatment for his very sick mother. I, I grew up with grandparents in the house. I grew up eating all Armenian food, dying to eat macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. That's what I dreamt about. But in retrospect, I do appreciate all of the good Armenian food that I enjoyed growing up in Cudahy, Wisconsin. So some of my favorite times were when I have gatherings around my own table. Each week, I am going to invite you to my radio table and say in Armenian, which means it's time to eat, come to the table. My goal with this show is to invite real people to the table of conversation, hoping you'll all want a second helping of whatever, whatever I'm dishing out. Your first recorded show, airing on September 19th, which is a week from today, and it is my 30th wedding anniversary on that day, is about Liberia Tropical El Garete with owner Jackie and her daughter Sheely. This business is on Main Street, and I am hoping that after you hear this first show, you will run into their business at 1244 and order your food and drinks. The second show spills all the beans about upcoming events at the Maine Moose, a new local destination and favorite food spot in Columbia. Linda and Steve Harrington are all about their community and bringing great food and fun to all the peeps, including dogs, which they allow at their business. So with that, you know, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to tell you everything because I do have other programs recorded. So you'll just have to listen in every Monday at 5.05 p.m. as Ravings and Cravings comes to you across the airwaves of WILI. <laughs>